So what's going on guys? My name's Chopper. Welcome everybody to a brand new video here today on the channel. Now guys, what we're going to be going over are 60 things that you need to know about Minecraft. These are going to be a bunch of facts about the game that are significantly going to increase your knowledge on this game and make your experience way better as a whole. If you guys do go into enjoy today's video, then I would really appreciate a like rating. You guys absolutely destroyed the last video with getting over 5,000 likes. So we're going to go raise the bar a little bit for this video and go for 6,000 likes. I would really appreciate it. And if you are brand new to the channel and haven't yet, so subscribed. I want to welcome you. Thank you for being here and I hope you guys enjoy your stay. Make sure to stick around and subscribe for more videos just like this in the future. And we've got plenty more Minecraft videos coming up down the road on this channel. So make sure to go ahead and stick around for that. But without further ado, guys, let's get into the 60 things that you need to know about Minecraft. Number 60, you can use a cactus to destroy extra blocks. Now, some people like to opt for having the cactus as sort of a trash can as opposed to a lava bucket, which I've mentioned in a previous video. This is basically a way to dispose of blocks that you're not using anymore. A lot of extra resources that you're going to throw away anyway you can use a cactus to do so depending on how you place it however keep in mind you won't be able to place any blocks directly around it number 59 you can create your own coal using wood now if you for whatever reason don't want to go and mine for regular coal you can make it yourself by burning it now using charcoal as a resource is really one of those only things i'm going to recommend to players who maybe are brand new to the game or for whatever reason in your minecraft game if you physically cannot obtain any coal at the moment this is probably your best option to do so but just keep in mind that it is a thing number 58 you can use doors to make air pockets pockets underwater and this is a really good technique if you're trying to explore a little bit more like aquatically but you're having trouble doing so as you're just running out of air too much and you don't have the proper enchantments and potions to do that a little bit more efficiently you can set doors underwater like this and will make complete safe air pockets for you to replenish all of your air it's a really good strategy to set up multiple of these as it goes deeper underwater for you to kind of serve as little checkpoints to get to that final destination at the bottom coming in at number 57 signs are a really good organizational tool you can use these to write any message you want and it can help sort out like materials and resources and food for you and it's going to make things overall a lot easier if you're kind of having trouble keeping things sorted and the best part is they cost virtually nothing so you might as well make a whole bunch because it's really going to help out just in practicality 56 is a really good trick especially when you come across those cave mines that are just laid out with cobweb that you can't really navigate through very well it's dangerous down there especially if you get caught up but if you carry a water bucket and place down the water it's going to sweep up all of the cobweb in its way and you can literally eliminate all of it in the blink of an eye this is just yet another reason why you should always be carrying a water bucket in this game number 55 i think it's a really good idea to put lily pads in the water that lines your farm now the reason you want to have this is because you can reach all of the wheat without having to ever jump into the dirt at all and not to mention the lily pads fit in just with the aesthetic very nicely so it doesn't look bad if you just put a block there or something it fits in it's natural and it's actually practical as well to reach all of your crops i think this is a must-have for every farm 54, if you want to put a clock or any item for that matter up on the wall, you can do so by putting an item frame over inside of your house and then placing a clock on that. This way, you can keep the clock on the wall. You don't always have to carry it with you, but you can put literally anything you like on here as well. A lot of the regular household items in Minecraft fit really well into these item frames, but you can put whatever you want in these. 53, you should really invest in making an armor stand. Now, not only do they just look really nice in your house when you have them, but they're also pretty practical because you can avoid putting extra armor in into chests and just kind of taking up space. This way you can have it out and you can still use it whenever you need, but it just looks nice and it fits nicer over here as well. 52, if you need to be cooking in bulk, if you have a ton of raw materials that need to be cooked, then what you can do is place a lava bucket in your furnace and it's going to burn for over a thousand seconds and you get so much cook time just out of one lava bucket pour and you pretty much have an infinite source of that. So if you don't want to bother with replacing coal all the time or putting more wood in, just drop a lava bucket in there and then cook a ton of things at once. 51, you can use a water bucket inside of mining to push you around inside of really small places. What I mean by that, it's a really advanced form of mining where you're kind of in the smallest space possible and you're swimming inside of the cave essentially from your bucket and you can cover a lot of ground this way. You can mine a ton of materials and uh, it's a really advanced farming method, but if you get good at it, it can definitely reap you a lot of benefits. Typically, it's not necessary, but it's certainly something that's good to know if you want to keep it in the back of your mind. Number 50, you need to know that you can make really, really tall trees if you do this trick where you put a block over on the side of it where the stump basically cannot grow. So if you kind of set up like this and then you put a bunch of bone meal or just let the tree grow, you might get an extremely tall tree. This is good to know because you're going to reap more wood per tree, but it's also nice if you just want more aesthetic looking trees. Let's say if you're lining around a house or something and you don't want it to be so short. 49, you can actually manually explode creepers by using flint and steel. And this is a really good strategy because you don't have to kind of play around with them and risk your life getting too close and, you know, 
th hoping they don't explode and end up killing you. So you can blow them up on your liking just by hitting them once with the flint and steel and run away and have plenty of time to be safe. This is also good if you want to tactically blow somewhere up as well. 48, this is a really good tip if you're inside of strongholds or down in caves where these things are. Silverfish are really annoying to fight because they tend to multiply, as you guys know. But the best way to avoid that is by hitting them with flint and steel as well. And when you burn them up, they don't actually produce more, which is good because it makes your life a ton easier. And this is probably the number one thing you need to know if you're going to be kind of looting strongholds and exploring them correctly. Silverfish honestly aren't too bad on their own, but when they tend to multiply and stack up, things get a little bit dangerous. 47, you actually don't have to go very deep to find diamonds. Now, on your Y coordinates, this is the best way to tell where you are, and basically layers 11 through 16 seem to be prime time for finding diamonds. Obviously, you can find them a little bit lower, but a lot of new players to Minecraft seem to think you have to go to the very bottom to even think about finding them, but nah, it's actually not like that. 46, mushroom biomes are actually safe for mobs at night, so if you're having trouble even setting up in Minecraft, or if you're going on an adventure, but there's a long stretch of mobs that you don't know if you can really handle, finding a mushroom biome is going to provide you at least a little bit of sanctuary. It also has some resources that you might really like, but best of all, it is a completely safe space for mobs. 45 is a really neat trick for dealing with endermen, so basically the way to trigger these things is by looking them in the eye, obviously, as you guys know, but the thing is, if you wear a pumpkin head, then you can actually walk up to them without them getting annoyed, and so this makes kind of collecting ender pearls, if you need to take these down or at least get kind of land the first blow, so much simpler. There are a ton of different ways with dealing with endermen quickly and efficiently, but this is definitely one of the ones that you're going to keep in your arsenal. 44, taming animals, and especially cats and dogs, can be really beneficial. You guys know basically having a wolf as a companion is always a good idea, and there's tons of functions that it can have, but also having an ocelot or like a regular cat around is not a bad idea either, and even creepers try to actively avoid cats, which is probably one of the best reasons to keep them hanging around. Maybe if you want to protect a house or kind of base. You can tame almost every animal in the game. However, some of these are the most useful. 43, snowballs are actually really effective in taking down blazes. If you struggle with these guys because they put up projectiles that can absolutely delete you. So obviously blazes are no joke, but you can have some things in your arsenal. These snowballs, they really, really don't like that. It's not the most practical thing in the world, but keep in mind, it's a surprisingly useful tool for this very specific situation. 42 is just something that you probably want to know. The fact that if you're mining underwater or through water, it's going to take a little bit longer to destroy that block. This is especially noticeable if you're trying to get stone that's underwater or even sometimes dirt. For the most part, mining something that's underwater or in contact with it really isn't the best idea and you want to isolate whatever you're trying to get first before you go and get it, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do and that's what happens. 41, gold as a resource is something I generally recommend you never waste on tools. However, some people swear that you can use gold shovels and it really isn't that detrimental to your overall utility of that and gold shovels are really fast as well so there is some cases where i think gold tools can be useful but as far as making armor and actual weapons for combat it's not a good idea you're better off saving it and using it on gold apples instead 40 if you're playing a lot of survival chances are you're taking down a lot of mobs and collecting a lot of bones from skeletons now making this into bone meal has so many good uses that i think a lot of people don't take advantage of it it's a great fertilizer for putting grass and flowers around your house it's also good for growing trees quicker as well as making your wheat farm grow faster. Bone meal is essentially a fast forward button for all of your things that need to grow in this game, and it's so useful. 39, if you come across a mob spawner and you're having trouble managing it, simply placing torches and creating light around it will prevent all those from spawning so that you don't have to quite destroy it at that very moment. 38 is obviously never try and sleep in the nether. Now, most Minecraft players know about this. If you, if you know, you know, but never bringing a bed to the nether is a good idea. However, that being said, in Minecraft coming up very soon, there is going to be a way for players to respawn in the nether and whether that's going to include us placing beds there somehow and sleeping there i think that's unlikely i think there'll be a different way to spawn there but that's coming up in a future update so something to look out for this might be a thing that changes speaking of the nether number 37 collecting gas tiers is one of the most basic elements of creating potions and it's really something that you should stock up on whenever you visit the nether because if you're into making potions and you rely on those a lot then that's going to be your base they're also fairly easy to obtain as well. You only need to hit the gas with a couple arrows, and then it pretty much drops them every single time, so they're not too bad to go and collect. 36, I think it's a really good idea to keep some mushroom cows nearby. Now, these aren't going to give you exactly what you think, what happens when you milk a regular cow in this game, but they're still going to provide you with some substance. It's going to be some soup that they provide. These are one of the most, like, substantial animals in the game as far as
stars, like getting different types of food from them. So they're very, very valuable. If you can have a bunch of them nearby, then it's something that's going to really serve you well. 35, you can turn a zombie villager back to normal by using a potion of weakness on it. You need to do this during the day so it doesn't burn up and die, but you can use this potion on it and then feed it a golden apple and eventually it will turn back into a regular villager. So you can actually rescue these and they're not completely gone once they've been zombified. Again, you got to make sure, however, you keep them in a very safe place away from the sun and pretty much away from any other harm that could come across them. 34, you are actually able to disarm pillagers. Now, I know that sounds kind of weird, but what you can do is wait about 20 to 30 minutes for these guys to completely burn out their bow. Eventually, that crossbow is going to break and they're going to have nothing. And then after that, you should theoretically be able to barter with them. And you can do this with multiple pillagers, although it's not the most time efficient thing to do. So if you're really not feeling it, you can take them out as quickly as possible. But just always keep in mind, this is an option to disarm them. It's just going to take you a bit. 33, if you're going to do some serious water diving, then consider getting some potions and enchantments that allow you to breathe and see and swim faster underwater. A lot of these armor enchantments will make you swim faster. There are ones, potions that could make you breathe underwater as well as be able to have a bit more vision. So all of these combined can make for a really fluid water experience. And uh, because of now how good the mechanic is, you can do a lot under this. 32, if you happen to have some fire that's spreading out of control, you have an option of using splash potions and specifically you should use the water one to take out that fire and stop it very quickly. Now, of course, this is really great if you accidentally set like your base or house on fire and you need to stop it. You can use a water bucket for this purpose as well, but I also like using these splash potions because you can throw them very quickly and it's a bit more accurate in that way. 31, you can use your shield to reflect skeleton arrows onto other mobs if you're being overwhelmed. And what's going to happen is if you successfully reflect an arrow, then what's going to happen is that mob is going to attack that skeleton, getting both of those away from you. They're going to fight it out and likely the skeleton is going to lose if the zombie in most cases reaches him, but it's at least going to take pressure off of you and it's a really good trick to know. Not only defends yourself, but really sets the enemies against each other. Number 30, fletching tables currently in Minecraft are completely useless. This might be an item that some players are confused about and they're, and they're not really sure all what it does or even if they should even have one. Right now, the answer is no, but eventually I think in Minecraft, these are going to get some functionality and some mechanics soon, which will be really nice to see. But at the moment, don't worry about it and it's simply used for aesthetic and decoration for now. 29, llamas really don't like wolves. So if dogs are around and llamas kind of see them, then they're going to actively spit at them and try to damage them. So you want to kind of stay away from that, especially if you have a lot of wolves coming through an area where the llamas tend to be. 28 is a quick update you're going to need to know very soon. Zombie pigmen are now going to be changing to piglins. So this is part of the nether update that's coming very soon. If you guys weren't aware, the pigmen that have been in Minecraft basically since the beginning, essentially, are uh, com completely getting a name change and everything is going to be called a piglin from here on out. 27, you can actually change the color of the beacon if you have a certain color tinted glass. You can do this with multiple of them as well. Basically, the beacon color will change to whatever kind of glass you put over top of it and you can use multiple beacons, you can use uh, tons of different colors and really just light at the sky to make it incredibly beautiful. And this is something that I really think you should do and invest in if you're a person that uses the beacon feature a lot. Not only is it really easy to do, but it just makes them look so much nicer. 26 is the old tried and true method. If you're having trouble mining and finding your own diamonds, the best thing you could possibly do to get yourself started is to go and find a village. And more often than not, some of the chest around that village is going to have a couple of diamonds in it. That's the easiest way to go and obtain yourself some if you're not able to mine them naturally. However, if you have enough kind of hours in this game and you know the tips and tricks, you should be able to find your diamonds relatively easily. But this is always the fallback if you still are having trouble. 25, just so you guys know, it's very useful to have. You cannot sleep while you are poisoned, even if it's nighttime, despite that. If you have any kind of poison effect on you whatsoever, you will not be able to rest because a lot of people tend to use this as a scapegoat to sort of get out of the effect that's been placed on them. And hopefully they kind of respawn back in the morning with full health and the effect negated. But it doesn't work like that. You have to survive the entire poisoning or process before you can sleep. 24, zombies will not burn in the sun if they're in cobweb or under some shade. This can include like a tree if they're completely blocked from the sun with, but mostly cobweb if for whatever reason they're inside of that in the earth realm, then they will not burn up. So if you want to keep a zombie around for any reason whatsoever, this is probably the easiest way to do it. Not only does it make them significantly slower, but it does keep them safe from that sun. 23, raiding a woodland mansion and taking down the evokers is going to grant you a totem of undying. This is an item that is going to allow you one self-revive if you're holding it and you happen to die for any reason at all. You will keep all 
all your stuff, and you'll basically get a second chance. It's one of the best items in the entire game, but it's not going to come at an easy price. So keep this in mind, but these are the people that you want to go after if you want to obtain this item. 22, Ocelots will not take fall damage whatsoever. These are one of the very few animals in the game with falling from a high place, they will not receive any damage. And so this is going to allow you to maneuver quickly and somewhat dramatically while having a cat follow you for an Ocelot if it's tamed and uh, it will not have any damage from falling. 21, cakes are one of the only food items that you can store externally on something. And this is not only good for managing space in your inventory, but can be something that you leave at your base if you happen to run out of food and you genuinely need something. Having a cake baked on the table not only looks cool, but is actually practical as well. Number 20, golems are really good to have around as a kind of defense system. These guys are big, they're tough, and they'll keep mobs away from you when kind of set up properly. And they're just kind of good sentries to have around if you're protecting a village or protecting a base that you want to keep pesky mobs away from. And these guys don't go down easily, so they are very reliable. 19, you can destroy leads that are holding animals by throwing eggs at them. Now, I don't know really why this is a thing or why it's practical, but if you want to take down a lead quickly and free a horse or something, throw an egg at it and it's simply going to break off. It's pretty crazy. 18, this technique can be used in a multitude of different ways, and while it is a little bit to get the hang of exactly how it's done, you can use ender pearls to teleport through glass. It's important to keep in mind, however, you will take a little bit of damage each time you teleport through this glass because the game doesn't really like you doing that, but you can pull off some very interesting techniques and maneuvers by doing this. 17, you can use cauldrons to collect water from the rain. Now, they're going to fill up very, very slowly, but this will provide you an infinite source of water. For whatever reason, Reason. If you happen to be far away from a source and you can't get to it very easily, maybe you're on a mountaintop or something, putting cauldrons at the top and letting them collect the rainwater, albeit very slowly, is still a very reliable source for infinite water. And you can take that out, use it however you like, and it's going to fill back up next time it rains. And if you put multiple like this, it's even better. This is one of the best ways to use cauldrons, in my opinion, because there are some places in Minecraft where water isn't an easy available resource. 16 is a really specific game knowledge thing, but slimes will not spawn in swamp areas on a new moon in Minecraft. Minecraft. And this happens somewhat rarely, but it's kind of a benign thing to know about because slimes aren't really a problem. But for whatever reason, if you're having trouble finding them, and it's a new moon. That's why. 15, chainmail armor is one of the very few items in the game that cannot be crafted. You're going to have to obtain this item through looting and fighting and that sort of thing. But chain armor is, it's good in its own right. It's not quite as strong as iron, definitely not as good as diamond, but it's better than gold. The only problem with chain armor is because it's not very readily available. It's, it's solid as a piece but it's more of kind of like a novelty thing just to keep around. 14, a really neat trick you can do against mobs is wear one of the maybe creeper heads or other mob heads, and this is going to lessen the range of detection by about half or 50%. And so what this is going to allow you to do is get a little bit closer to these enemies without them picking up on you on the radar, although you cannot just run freely as they'll still know it's you if you get too close. But it's a good trick because these mob heads are very practical. 13, by setting up your animal farm in a way where you have a fence around it, but one one by one pole in the middle, you're going to leave a small gap that you, the player, can walk through absolutely fine, but whatever animals you have inside of that farm cannot escape. So it's just one of those ease of use things and quality of life fixes where you don't have to open and shut the gate every time you go in and out and use this farm. It's just the most easy way to do this. I promise you, once you start making your farms like this, you will literally never go back to any other way. 12, you can run your boat very fast into the side of a coast without fear of it breaking. I remember this is a thing in earlier Minecraft where if you hit your boat too hard on the side of land or something, it's going to be destroyed. But on Minecraft now, you really don't have to worry about that, and you can drive your boat as fast as you want. 11, a super cool trick you can do with TNT is hiding behind glass as it explodes will pretty much negate the entire effect of TNT. Now, it will still hit you a little bit, but it'll mostly buffer and muzzle all of the damage that's going to put out. And this is a really good thing to know if you're going to be using TNT to clear out masses of space of inside caves if you're mining. It just essentially acts as kind of a blast shield that you wouldn't expect to be so useful. 10, the somewhat new dual wielding feature where you can hold two items in both your hands is a very good addition and it's great for combat, obviously. You guys know that holding like a sword and a shield at the same time is a very good strategy, but also holding a sword and then maybe a totem of undying if you have it as well, if you really feel like you're going to die, is going to be your best bet. But taking full advantage of that is always a good idea to do, no matter what kind of player you are or really no matter what kind of situation you're in. 9, cobblestone actually takes very slightly longer to mine than regular stone does. And the only reason this is important is because of the effect that it might have on your tools, which is pretty much none, but I guess it's just something that's kind of cool to know. The amount of real time that it takes to mine between these two and the difference is so negligible, it might as well just be a couple of milliseconds, but I guess
guess it's useful to know. Eight, you can change the color of the collar if you have a domesticated dog. And this is really a nice personalization feature because a lot of people don't take advantage of it and just kind of roll with the default red color. But there's so many dyes in this game that you can make this kind of however you want it. And this is aside from the fact that you can name your dog as well. Both of these are great things to know. Seven, charged creepers will grant you mob heads. Now, if you're able to take out an enemy from a charged creeper, a lot of things have to line up. First of all, it has to be thunderstorming, of course, and that creeper needs to be shocked by lightning. And when that blows up, you may be able to obtain some mob heads from that. That's the easiest way to do so. There are other methods of getting some other ones, but they're a little bit more involved. Six, you can literally fly in Minecraft by using the wings item. And this is one of those things where it comes with a sacrifice. Yeah, you can get off of high places safely. You can glide down, but you will have to not wear body armor in doing so. And this is a really good feature to use, but do it with caution as you are going to sacrifice having some body protection. Five, the position of your dog's tail will indicate the animal's health. If it's all like low and kind of between its legs, and you're going to know that your dog is low on health. And by feeding it, you'll slowly raise it back up. This is the best way to manage the health of your pets. And uh, it's something to always keep an eye on. As they don't have a standard health bar, as it were, this is the best way to keep track of your pets. Four bees, which are some of the brand newest additions to Minecraft, are one of the coolest new things that we've gotten in a long time. And bees, for the most part, are pretty much harmless unless you attack them first. They behave pretty much like bees in real life, where they will never, ever harm you unless you kind of go out of your way to antagonize them. But for the most part, keep these guys around because they're friendly. Three, it used to be a really good strategy in Minecraft to put Endermen, and for that for that matter, other mobs on Soulstone, as it would slow them down and make it easier for you to take them out. But now in Minecraft, Endermen in particular just completely walk over this normally, and they're not slowed down by it, however you are. So it's something to really be careful about, and the old trick that used to work back in the day isn't effective anymore. Two, baby zombie pigmen, or piglins, I guess we should call them now, are the best way to get XP. This, this enemy will single-handedly give you the most per kill, but what you got to keep in mind is this is for, like, the standard enemy's boss. Any kind of bigger ones are not included, but these are a really good way to farm XP as well. And finally, number one, you might not know this, but it's actually more efficient if you're using splash potions to toss them up on yourself rather than throwing them down because it's going to last you a little bit longer. Now, that is really not something that's completely game-breaking from this kind of perspective, but it's something that a lot of Minecraft players who are relatively experienced know, and some new players who just kind of throw their splash potions down without thinking twice about it. There's really no right or wrong way, but if you really want to maximize everything out as much as possible, this is the way to go about and do it. But guys, that is going to be 60 things that you need to know about Minecraft. I really hope you guys did enjoy today's video. If you did, make sure you absolutely smash a like on it as we are going to go for 6,000 on this video. I know you guys can do it. Definitely subscribe if you are brand new to the channel for more videos like this as well. And if you made it to the end of the video, you are a certified mad lad. Thank you so much for sticking around. And if you haven't already, leave a little emoji in the comment section. I'll know you made it all the way to the end. But uh, I appreciate you very much for watching once again. Have a great rest of your day. Plenty more Minecraft content to come. But I'll see you guys in the next stream or the next video. Take it easy and peace out.